Good day, everybody. This is the second part of the Sonic the Hedgehog CD playthrough. And of course, I'm starting this part out at a special stage, just getting the bullshit over with early, because like I said in part one, I despise these special stages a lot for somebody who absolutely loves the rest of this game. <laughs> But yeah, this, like I said, I managed to ace most of these pretty early on, and then I start, when I got to the last couple of special stages, that's when I really started to struggle. So you can imagine the perfectionist I was trying to be, recording this many times over again, just because of these special stages. I believe that is time stone number four. Or... Yes, that was time stone number four, folks. But yeah, you can actually get, like I said in part one, you can get through these zones really quickly. And if you don't stop and look around once in a while, you might miss it. But anyways, this is the third this is the third act in Collision Chaos and this is the next battle with Dr. Eggman, which this one this one's pretty easy if you can get through it all right. It's these pinball sections the, the pinball sections are absolute mess for this level. And it's this can either be your, this can either be something you can get through in a matter of seconds or something you can be stuck on for a few minutes. And if I remember right, every attempt I made in this, uh, as far as recording and practicing for it, I was just absolute garbage. And it's kind of weird because any time I had played it beforehand, I could usually get through here pretty quickly. It's just kind of cringy and painful to look back on and commentate over almost. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to point out once again that this came out originally on the Sega CD. And it was just the first of many horrible decisions that Sega made in the 1990s that ultimately led to their demise, unfortunately. It all started with the Sega CD, if you look back at it. They tried to come up with like a CD-based add-on for the Sega Genesis, and then they tried to come up with another add-on for the Sega Genesis called the 32X, and that was an even bigger failure than the Sega CD. And then they made games for both of them. They were CD32X games. <laughs> but I'm not making any of this shit up. And then, after all that, the Sega Saturn came out. I love the Sega Saturn. The Sega Saturn is one of my favorite consoles of all time. But unfortunately, then just a lot of bad decisions with marketing and a lot of things going on in like the corporate side of Sega at the time and they were just they were just slowly killing themselves off they couldn't keep up with the future they couldn't keep up with the PlayStation and the, when the Sega Saturn came out the PlayStation and the Nintendo 64 pretty much smoked their asses Because of such, a lot of Sega Saturn games are actually really hard to come by. And a lot of them go for a lot of money. I would I would know because I actually paid a pretty good chunk of I've I've owned two Sega Saturns in my lifetime. And each of those times I owned one of the final five games in my collection. And the final five games is I'm pretty sure House of the Dead, um, Panzer Dragoon Saga, maybe, uh, Magic Knight Ray Earth, Burning Rangers, and I can't remember what the last one was, and I could be wrong about Panzer Dragoon Saga, but I know it was one of the last games to come out on the Saturn. 
But when I first owned a Sega Saturn, I had Magic Knight Ray Earth. And whenever I owned one the most recent time, I had Burning Rangers. And both times, I paid a pretty good penny for those games. Unfortunately, like I said, that was, that was around the time that Sega was just unable to keep up with everything that was going on around them. And Everybody was buying PlayStations and 64s. I wanted to point out that on the Sonic Gems collection, one of the uh, games that was on the Saturn, Sonic R, it's like a really, it's a racing game, and maybe one day I'll play that for the channel. It's a pretty cool racing game. My only gripe with it, really, I have two gripes actually. My two gripes with it, is that the controls are kind of eh. The controls are just not very good. And it's a very short game. There's only five tracks total. There's only, yeah. And games like Mario Kart had so much more than that. I feel like that's kind of a missed opportunity. But the Gems Collection has that game on it. And I, actually, both times I owned a Sega Saturn, I owned Sonic R. I, I do really like Sonic R, despite the length of it. But here we go back in time again. Oh yeah, I should have pointed this out. We are now in the third zone of the game, Tidal Tempest. Once again, rocking them alliterations. All around the nation. And I always kind of seen this as kind of like... So I compared this to Sonic 1 in the last part. And with Palm Tree Panic, I kind of see that as kind of like Green Hill. I kind of see this as the labyrinth zone of the game. Really, this one does remind me a lot of Labyrinth Zone. Only a little bit better. And I like the music a lot better. But I like everything about this game a lot better than every... Well, like, except for the special stages. I like everything else about this game a lot better than really just about any other game in the Sonic franchise. And yes, I do like a lot of the classic games a lot more than a lot of the modern games, and I'm not completely, I'm not one of those fans who's just like, green eyes, blasphemy, I'm not, no, no. As much as I love the classic series, there are a lot of games in the 3D modern Sonic era that I like just as much. It's just that Sonic CD is my absolute favorite over all of them. But yeah, it should be getting ready to come up on... This is, say, special stage number five. Should be getting ready to come up upon the where I started having to cut them out because once I started losing, I just left it out in post production. Although, although that I did leave, I did leave one of the special stages I lost, and just because I wanted to show it off, just because how much of an eyesore it can be. I also wanted to point out the apparent, apparently this and Sonic 2 were supposed to be one game at one point, but some, like, a bunch of people split off and just started doing their own thing because Sonic 2 was supposed to have the concept of time travel, and there are a couple of, there is a zone that was left out of the game that kind of indicates that. But yeah, as far as I know, they were supposed to be one game at one point. 
Also, I wanted to point out that apparently Sonic 2 was originally going to get a Sonic CD, or <laughs> Sega CD release. That was something that was considered at one point, but never happened. Which was probably just something to do with the fact that the Sega CD just didn't sell hardly anything. In fact, I've only ever actually... I do have a Sega CD story. I've never owned a Sega CD, but when I was a kid, I had... Uh, one of my friends who lived down the street from me actually owned a Sega CD, but he'd never he didn't own any games for it, and we didn't know if it ever we didn't know if it actually worked or not. But I do think it was pretty cool that he owned a Sega CD. Yeah, I just, I just don't have much to say about these special stages. To me, I just, I've never really been that good at the, I mean, I have gotten all seven time stones before, but I've just never been that good at doing that. Every playthrough, I would say a majority of my playthroughs, I don't, as I mentioned with all the uh, practice and recording and everything I did trying to get this playthrough to where it was at least halfway decent. <laughs> Here we are in Tidal Tempest Act 2 and a lot like uh, Labyrinth Zone Act 2 or I think it was Act 2 if you just over to the left if you just keep falling I'm pretty sure it eventually becomes an endless loop if you but it's kinda hard to you can't just fall straight down, there's always a platform there to catch you, but if you keep falling, the gaps in between, or jumping down, it eventually just loops. But yeah, now that I have all the equipment I need, I am so hyped to start doing more stuff for the YouTube channel, and so hyped for the future of Let's Plays and everything I can bring to the table and to the YouTube table for the Fromark Industries channel. I always thought those things were kind of weird. They just they're gaping mouths that shoot fire. They shoot fireballs. I'm going to travel back in time again and get Sonic up to 88 miles per hour. But yeah, everything about this game. I do like a lot of the past zones in this game. I like them a lot. Which... I like games that do time travel concepts and stuff like that. So if anybody has any kind of games to recommend like that, mess around with time travel, let me know. I've always been kind of a nerd when it comes to stuff like that. And yes, I used to watch Doctor Who a lot too. I, I, I haven't seen, I haven't watched any of it in a long time, but I used to be kind of a Doctor Who fan. I like Back to the Future, all three movies. I think the second one's probably the best. Third one's not very good, but a lot of movie trilogies, I noticed the third one's not the best. And I feel like the Sonic CD does the time travel concept pretty well. But anyways, folks, that's looking, there's the capsule right at the end of Act 2. I see that the, we're right up on the end, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off, and I will see all of you in part number three, folks. Mm, television, yeah. Shit of a bop-bop.